Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be talking about getting the uh, print bed ready for our first print. So, uh, one of the things that, that we need to do with this is actually glue this down or, or glue on the surface to prepare it. So, uh, over, over the uh, time I've been involved with this, I mean, I've tried a number of glues, and I'm trying to find what I did with my favorite glue stick, and I start the video and I can't find it, but I found it. So, anyways, um, this is my favorite. So, it's a Staples Jumbo Glue Stick. Uh, this is some kind of weird glue I haven't used that came with the printer. Uh, this, I've, I've bought a bunch of this uh, UHU, and this is not too bad. I, I bought this off of Amazon, and this actually... That was my first stick with the uh, Duo, and then I've tried the Elmer's Purple Glue. So um, I actually like this. I've grown to like the Staples the best um, because uh, with this, it's um, I like the, the bigger surface area that it has. Um, and you can see it's got a little bit of residue on it from the the two up, but it's got a bigger surface area, so it goes down uh, a bit faster, and, and that uh, all all. All three of these, again, I haven't used this one. This one this is the new one that came with the one up. It's some Chinese brand. I'll probably give it to the grandson to use. Um, but all three of these have worked, and I would probably, in the order of best, I would go this way. Um, it is probably about how they've worked the best. Um, so uh, sometimes glue is a little bit of a personal preference, too. Uh, I've had a lot of people say the Avery uh, glue stick. I, I've tried it. I don't really see that it's really any different than, than the Staples. Um, uh, you know, so I, I do notice a little bit of difference between these two. These two are pretty close. The the Elmer's, eh, I, I don't know. I haven't had that good of a, a, a of experience with it, and I've tried it for a while. So I take that one out. So I, I would really stick between, like, you know, the two of these. Um, and this one's a pretty common guy, gal, whatever, in the uh, 3D printing world. But uh, anyways, um, enough said on glue, so uh, get the light to turn back on here. So basically what we take the cover off, and then what I do is I start at the edges. Now, I have a duo, and what, what that typically does is prints a test run on the side. And so this is a brand new 1.0 for me, so I'm, I, the, the one cartridge usually prints over here. So I'm going to make sure that I do both both sides just in case um, pretty well because one of the things when it runs the test print or you know where it does the the um, the skirt what I'd call skirting in normal terms you don't want that to come loose and get on your other print so you want to make sure that, that this is that this is glued down well then after and then again I go sort of in, in, in a pitch format rather than a yaw format to make sure now you want to get a fair amount of glue down, but you don't want to get too much, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So after I do that, I usually start at the front, and then I work my way back, uh, going left to right. And then what I do is in this area is I go front to back to make sure the entire bed's covered. Now, I, I'm a little bit anal with this. Some people, you know, if they know that it's just going to print in the middle, they'll just do the middle and maybe the sides. I, I just do the whole bed. I don't get too particular. Uh, I do put down a coat uh, for each print, but I don't clean the bed typically after each print. And you can get about three to four prints. Now, the piece that, that I'll warn you is the, the more glue you put up, um, you know, the more pressure you're going to get on that first layer. And there's a little bit of good and bad with that. So the more pressure you get in the first layer, I, I found the better it sticks. But then also, if you get too much, uh, what happens is it, it, it pushes out in the side. And unfortunately, I really don't have anything good to show you that has that um, uh, effect on it. Uh, maybe you can see a little bit here. Uh, yeah, see, the, see, this, see how this is pushed out? So this first line, when it goes down, or first couple lines until it sort of normalizes because usually what happens your first line is a little bit thicker the slicer usually pushes it out a little bit thicker uh, and hopefully again you can see that on this piece and uh, 
uh, what happens is you actually, this is taking up a couple thousands, so this is pushing it up and it's making it spread out more, uh, which is a little bit okay for me actually because I find I get better adherence and, and one of the things I would rather end up cleaning that off a print um, than having a print not stick. So again, kind of your choice, but um, I, I found success doing that. The other thing keep in mind that the thickness of the glue will also affect the thickness of your part. Now again, you know, these are not high resolution devices, so if it's a couple thousands, it really shouldn't matter in the overall print, but just something you should be aware of. How do you clean this? Um, I usually clean it about once every three or four prints. I keep a spritz bottle of water next to the my printer, our printers, so you can kind of see this, and I simply spritz it on there, and then I take a paper towel, kind of rub it around, and then drape the paper towel and let it sit for a few minutes to 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 soften up the glue and then um, because actually what I'll do is I'll take you over next door to the 2O and you can kind of see it so again you can see this one I've just done a couple prints and you can see the residual kind of left over here and, and what I will do is um, this is after only one print I will put another coat of glue on top of this and print yet again without cleaning this but when I do clean it again I'll just spritz it uh, don't put a lot of water um, just enough to dampen it up put the paper towel over it let it soak with the paper towel covering it and then just wipe it up and you're done um, I typically give it a you know four or five minutes to to air dry before putting the glue on again um, I believe the glue is water soluble so you don't have a big um, issue with the glue having a problem with the water but it's just better to, to let it dry first and especially when it warms up um, it, it's good I, I and that's probably another piece I put the glue on when it's cold I really haven't had a problem with that um, I you really don't want to put it on when it's real hot maybe when it's warming up is sort of okay uh, but you know one of the things I've, I've tried when it's real hot it, the glue it melts it and kind of runs around and makes a mess and it's just not a, a good thing so um, hopefully those are some tips with with, with glue downs uh, and, and again you want to make sure you get the bed adequately covered now you probably won't get it 100% but you want to get like 98% 97% because again where it's stuck with the glue and it goes over a spot where it's not um, you know the parts where it's glued will still hold the part down. I typically do not print with with rafts um, between calibrating, leveling, and gluing. I've had very good luck getting good quality prints and no rafts because rafts are just a pain in the wazoo to deal with cleaning off, etc. So, uh, anyways, uh, hopefully this has helped. You know, hopefully you got one of these, uh, you know, as a gift or bought one for yourself and and you're enjoying it and, and the idea behind these sort of setup videos is to kind of um, help you learn so you know we've talked about the cartridges we've talked about loading it we've talked about calibration we've now talked about getting first prints and so you know gluing the bed and so all those things are, are all important things to make this a good experience because again I think one of the things with the Da Vinci's versus uh, a lot of the other printers is is the folks the, that I recommend purchasing the Da Vinci is focused on creating the part rather than the whole you know 3D printing experience itself or, or playing with the machine itself so kind of like the iPhone you just kind of let it do its thing and the product is, is the goal out of this and so um, having you know good understanding of the processes getting you there I think is important of, of ensuring the cartridge is properly seated the beds properly glued and you'll have a lot of fun with this especially with kids my grandson loves this we make little things he designs them on Tinkercad etc and we print them out and it's a fantastic experience to go from product you know on a computer to a real life three-dimensional product you can hold and manipulate here so Anyways, give it a thumbs up if this helped you out. If you enjoyed it, it helps us make more videos. Subscribe to the channel. A lot more coming both in the makerspace home fabrication area between 3D printers, laser cutters, CNC. Just trying to bring the triad together to, you know, in, in a small home fabrication business type setting. So again, give her a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.